Hey, what's up everyone? Water Closing here, and we have a brand new breakdown for today. It's gonna to be on Matt Corral, and we're gonna start the video right now. All right, so Matt Corral is the quarterback at Ole Miss. He is one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, if not maybe even the best quarterback in the nation right now. Overall, I think he's killing it. I'm a big fan of Matt Corral just because he's from the Southern California area. Actually went to Oaks Christian for a couple years and ended up transferring to Long Beach Poly. And, and I just think it's awesome how many quarterbacks that are playing big time Division One football right now that are actually from Southern California. So definitely huge up to the Southern California area. All the quarterback coaches, all the quarterbacks keep doing what we're doing because we're obviously doing a good job of you know, getting guys that are able to translate to the next level and play at a very high level. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and hop right into the breakdown here. Um, you know, obviously he's at Ole Miss. And, you know, first thing that stands out to me when going and breaking this down is you can see where his foot position is. He has a good base. You know, that's something that I've been talking about a lot lately is where you at. Because I think the base is important because if you can go and take a quick, easy step, in order to get the momentum going, I think that makes a big difference in being able to really make sure you can get the ball out of your hands faster and it also sets your body up to be able to transition more of the way forward, right? So you can see because he has a little bit wider base, now he can just easily sink it into that back leg, take the little step, and then is able to generate a lot of rotation from that point in the throw and this one ended up being a really really good really accurate throw and you know what stands out here is you know just i mean he has a little bit of that double load where he kind of comes back and then brings the ball up but has such a nice elbow drive right we couldn't see it too much there but overall really drives that elbow through and has like a full rotation in the spine as well i've seen that a couple times um you know through the years of doing these breakdowns where you know like uh, justin herbert is also really good at generating a lot of spine rotation Overall, Drew Brees is another guy that's like that. And he's, he is kind of similar to Drew Brees, Matt Corral is, in terms of, you know, he's a little bit undersized. He's only 6'2". Um, but I think, you know, in terms of how he throws, he has a lot of similarities with how he rotates in the spine. And you can even see, it's, I mean, it's unique in that he almost like drops that front arm, right? He's not really consistent with where he holds that front arm. He is very consistent, though, in how he pushes off that back leg and generating that rotation off that back leg. So we can see here he's really pushing off, generating plenty of rotation there, right? And this is what stands out. This is what we see time and time again is that guys that are able to throw the ball really far are able to generate a lot of force off that lower body in order to initiate the throw, right? So we can see how he pushes off and rotates. And when he does this, he is able to get a good amount of transition within in his, his whole body, really, but definitely his lower body. And then he uses that to then transition all that weight onto his front leg. So when he's Throwing here, he's not stopping his weight, right? He's continuing that rotation all the way through the throw. And again, you can see he's a little bit unique in how he kind of lets that front arm go off to the side, but he shifts all of his weight forward, which ends up being a critical part of being able to really generate a lot of force in the throw. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at his release time. So we're gonna say 201, three, two, six. I'm gonna go with all the numbers we got down there. This is obviously going to be a fast release here, 201.952, and we'll say it's out there, 202.327. All right, so obviously a little bit more time here overall within his, you know, release. So he's a little bit above, he's like at 0.36, okay, with the, time, with the release right here. All right, and that's where we say, you know, somewhere between 0.35 and 0.36, I think are all good numbers here. Again, he kind of brings that ball back a little bit. He could be a little bit more efficient with that, with his motion. Let's take a look at this one too. So he goes and he takes the ball back. Let's see, initializes it at 209.58, and is out at 209. Yeah, so again, about at 0.34 on that one, right? And so 0.33, 0.34, somewhere in there. Um, so overall, you know, I'd say maybe somewhere between 0.35 uh, for 0.33 and 0.35, right? So it's a, not at like a long time, right? We'll see people that go over 0.4, but it's not as fast as we've seen in the past. And, you know, really he's going to be able to, uh, I mean, he can optimize it, but you can see how the ball just jumps right out of his, out of his hand. So if you're a, a high school, you know, quarterback and watching this, this is really, you know, what ends up being the goal, right? So you should definitely watch guys like this because he's 6'2". There's a lot of guys that are 6'2". He's 205 pounds, 210 pounds, somewhere in there. 
um, which is not, you know, it, it's a good size guy, right? So if you're 6'2 and you're 165 pounds, you know, and you want to play in Division One, you know, he's 210, right? So you have 45 pounds left. So you got to ask yourself how much do you really want to play Division One football, right? Um, and so, you know, because you got to be able to put on that weight. That can't be something that holds you back if you really want to play at, at that level, right? You got to get stronger. You have to have the, the strong legs. But you can see he does a great job of, again, creating that disassociation. And, you know, he's similar to like a Mahomes where he just creates a ton of external rotation in the arm, right? And that's something that, you know, it's really hard to be able to teach because it's one of those things where you almost have it or you don't have it, right? Great external rotation in the shoulder is something that you could obviously build you can improve but you know he's had a great arm since as long as I've seen him play which is in high school he's probably 15 or 16 years old when I first saw him so you know in terms of his arm strength that was always something that was there because he had that external rotation now you do want to build it you do want to work on it it is something that you want to improve and I would say he was probably you know 15 16 he was probably already 180 pounds right and so what happens is that when you have that much uh, size and strength and ability to generate force now your body is able to adapt based off of your output. So if you're a strong guy when you're 15, the likelihood of you being strong when you're 21 is a lot greater than, you know, if you're somebody that's not very strong at 15, you being very strong at 21, right? And so you gotta be able to say, I am going to be very, very diligent and very much in a hurry in terms of getting stronger and getting bigger, right? Because I work with a lot of guys that just from a size perspective, just don't match up. Right, and then I can try to help you as much as I can of being able to improve your mechanics. You guys can watch as many drills and, and videos if you want, as you want. But if you're only 150 pounds, you're just not going to play at the next. You know, you're not going to play Division One football, uh, at least a quarterback 150 pounds. You can maybe play, you know, like slot receiver or something like that. But quarterback, you know, you're just not going to be able to generate the force necessary. So. Point being is you want to be able to understand the mechanics behind being able to, to generate the amount of force, but you also want to understand anthropometrics, which is that you have to be able to build up the size and the body in order to put out the output uh, or else you're not going to be able to get there. And that's why we have that within our program. So if you go in the description up below, within our throw program, we actually have a nutrition package. We have a a workout package we also do the mechanics so you have all the things necessary to be able to really build your body and build your performance overall and you know based off where you are some of you guys you know might be 6'2 right maybe you are already 215 and now you just need to work on the mechanics great that's where you know we could do that or you might be 6'2 and 165 pounds like i said before okay and maybe your mechanics aren't too bad let's put a big focus on being able to address the parts of your you know game that can improve which is your weight gain uh, strength gain power gain things like that some of you guys might need to be able to work on your footwork and, and your timing and your ability to get the rid of the ball on time right that's another big thing that that i know he's worked on with lane kiffin is being able to get the ball out of his hands at an effective time right so you can see as soon as this guy clears the linebacker that ball is out of his hands, right? And so you can't be late with your throws. You got to be able to throw with accuracy. You got to be able to throw with timing. You got to be able to work on all the parts of being the best version of a great quarterback as you can. And that's what I'm dedicated to being able to do within our program. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, you can leave those down below. And if you're interested in any of those programs, go ahead and check out the description. And we'll talk to you soon.